Hello, I'm Joseph Kasser, and this is an overview of my continuing education short course, Systems Engineering, Solving Complex Problems. And as you'll see, this course is totally different from all the other courses that you will find on the topic. So what I'm going to talk about for less than 15 minutes is an introduction, the learning outcomes, the assumptions behind the course, an overview of the sessions, some comments from participants who've taken the course. This course has been running since 2007 and has evolved over the years, and further information which you can get from me when you figure out how to contact me. So this is not your average course. It uses the systems approach and it was developed from 15 years of research into both the pedagogy, that is how to teach, and what needs to be taught. If you're expecting to sit back and listen for four days while I talk to you, you know, don't bother to come. That's not the way this class works. You will be taken out of your comfort zone, you will have to think, and the sessions are intense. And of course, this four day course can be and has been customized for specific needs. And I'll discuss that at the end of this little presentation. There are eight learning outcomes listed here. Understand the reasons for the different definitions of the term system and the various viewpoints on systems engineering. If you read the literature, all the books on systems engineering are different. All the classes are different and you will understand why. You'll be able to identify the various types of problems faced by systems engineers in different states of the system development process. You'll be able to identify an appropriate tool or methodology to solve the problems, and you'll be able to solve the problems. You'll understand the need for systems engineers with different competencies, skills, and knowledge in different parts of the system development process. And you will understand that there isn't always a single right solution to a problem. There are acceptable solutions. You will have improved system and critical thinking abilities, and you should be better than average engineers for your level of experience when you come out of this course. The course assumptions. The course is in seminar format, and there really is too much knowledge to cover in the contact hours in four days. So there's a lot of knowledge in the readings, and you will be expected to read the readings. You will get a set of readings, you will get the PowerPoint presentations and the readings associated with them, and you will be expected to look at the readings. The lectures will summarize and point out the important points and point you towards the information you need to know, and then the practical activities will bring the knowledge to life and provide the experiential anchor points, because studies in education have shown that people don't learn anything until they have some place where they can anchor the new knowledge to and the exercise will give you those anchor points. There are 13 sessions starting with the introduction and overview, and then I go into pure systems engineering and applied systems engineering. What are those, you ask? I'll tell you in a moment. Then do an introduction to system and the system life cycle, and then the rest of the course is made up of what systems engineers do in the different states of the system life cycle. So we go through the needs identification state. We cover the requirements state in two sessions. One deals with requirements and one deals with realization planning. Realization planning is often left out of courses on systems engineering. We go through design state, subsystem realization states, systems integration and system test states, operations and maintenance states and disposal states, also often left out. Most courses focus on getting the system done. That's the system development process. And they generally start in what I call session five and take you through to session nine. So this is a broader class. And then session 12 wraps up, summarizes the whole four days. It's a four day schedule. The standard class brings you into class on Monday and Tuesday, nine till six, very intense. You may even get a working lunch. Wednesday is free. You go back to the office and deal with whatever you have to do there, and then come back to class on Thursday and Friday. 
We also can do this in flexible delivery because the, the block mode is not really the best way to learn something. You really need some thinking time in between the sessions. So for local iterations, we can do it weekly semester style or one or two days per week. Uh, for more distance ones, we can use distance learning approach and a combination. We're flexible. Talk to us. You see this slide here, definitions. This already gives you a flavor of how different this class is. Systemic, thinking about a system as a whole. You look at the parts and the, and the relationships between the parts from different perspectives. Systematic, that's employing a methodology, method, method, methodical step-by-step -step manner. This deals with the processes. And you will find there are classes that just focus on this aspect alone. Systems thinking, which is thinking in a systemic and systematic manner. It's not just causal loops. Holistic thinking goes beyond systems thinking, the combination of analysis, systems thinking, and critical thinking. And then going to pure systems engineering. These are the cognitive skills that we use, including thinking and problem solving. And then there's applied systems engineering. This is the application of pure systems engineering. So this is what we talk about in terms of requirement solicitation, V and V, and the other activities that systems engineers do. And then there's the domain systems engineering. This is aerospace, defense, transportation. And so by organizing the class in this way, we can unplug particular examples and plug in different examples depending on the domain. So it allows a very flexible, customized class where we can actually use your problems as examples in the class. So now let's go through the sessions. In session one, pure systems engineering, you learn about thinking. You learn that we do do systems thinking, but generally in an incomplete ad hoc manner. You learn the benefit of interdisciplinary teams and to view issues from a standard set of different perspectives and the benefit of doing so. And you're going to use some cognitive thinking tools. And the class provides examples of viewing issues from different perspectives. And when I say provide examples, this is either in the session or in the readings. And you will recognize the need to go beyond systems thinking. Session two introduces the context for systems engineering. And here you get an insight as to the reasons for the many definitions of and the viewpoints of systems engineering. Talk to you about the state of the discipline. Yes, it is a discipline, but you'll find out that people don't quite agree as to what kind of discipline it is. And we provide an another example of viewing a situation from multiple perspectives, and you get the background for the activities that are performed in the various states of the system development process and to provide a concept for the different life cycle models and introduce useful tools and frameworks for applied systems engineering, including the nine systems model. Session three, an introduction to systems and the system life cycle. You will understand the nature of systems. I will introduce and you will use a functional template of a system. The template for the system integrates mission viability and resource management into the system as the start of the system development process instead of adding those functions later. So you will also include risk management upfront, not as a separate process. It introduces ways of creating systems to help manage complexity and you will understand the different states in the system development process because we're going to go through each of them in turn. We start with a needs identification state. So for each of the states, the common theme is understand the activities performed in the needs identification state of the system development process and create some of the products produced in the needs identification state of the system development process. And you can see the framework here. We're going to be focusing on the system level in layer two, and we're going to go through each of the states needs identification, requirements, design, construction, and so on, A, B, C, D, E, F, G for short. And G, the O and M, an upgrading state, is wider than the others because the system spends most of its time in that state. 
The requirements state. Identify the role, the nature of the problems, and the tools, and you will understand how to create a matched set of specifications for the system and its subsystems. You will understand the place of re requirements in systems engineering, and you will also experience the difficulty of writing good requirements. You get an exercise on this. In realization planning, you will understand the need and importance of planning, and so we're going to introduce planning, and you're going to learn some of the planning tools available. This is basically Project Management 101. It's not often taught in systems engineering classes, and you will get an exposure to this. There is no exercise in this session because the exercises will be done as part of the later sessions. In the system design state, again, the role of systems engineers in system design, partitioning the system, doing the trade-offs as to what goes where in the different parts of the system and the problems and the tools, methodologies, and techniques that are available to solve these problems. In the subsystem realization states, the role is more of a coordination and monitoring to make sure that the subsystems that are being constructed separately don't uh, violate the, the requirements, don't take up more power, and actually meet the requirements and sometimes get involved in making decisions as to transferring a function from one subsystem to another. And again, the tools and methodologies that are available. Session 9, the systems integration and system test states. Again, the roles, the problems, and the tools and methodologies. Integration is where it all comes together. And there are certain, in a sense, requirements for integration that we go through in this session. The O&M state, again, the role, the tools, the problems. The system spends most of its li lifetime in this state, and yet it's left out of many classes. We also conceptualize the initial aspect of the O&M state, like how the system will be handed over to the customer and should be operated and maintained by the customer. This is generally left out of other systems engineering courses. Session 11, again the disposal state. Once the system can no longer perform its function, it needs to be disposed of. And sometimes it's not that simple. There may be hazardous waste. And there may be other aspects that need to be considered. And we go through some of these in this session. Again, another state that's left out of most systems engineering classes. And session 12 does the wrap up. We summarize and wrap up the course and go through what was learned and what was pointed out in each of the states of the system lifecycle. Mostly, uh, this course focuses on layer two. Comments from some of the participants in previous classes. As I said, the class has been running since 2007 when I developed the initial class under a grant from the Leverhulme Trust at Cranfield University. So, satisfied customers. I've learned to look at problems using system thinking and generate ideas. It teaches me how to think and manage ideas. Applying techniques learned through the exercises. These comments come from participants in Singapore and Brunei. Systematic concepts for identifying problems, brainstorming for solutions. Tools, OARP, FRAT, and SPARK. You want to know what these are? Come and take the class. I have learned new perspectives to look at a system. System thinking perspectives. Any questions or comments? Do you need a customized version for your organization? This class is run in semester mode in TDSI, um, Master of Defense Technology Systems program. It's run in block mode in, in short course format. And we've got a three-day shortened version for Singapore's defense DSO who don't need all the states. And that shortened version has been running for five years. Need more information? Contact me. I'll be pleased to supply it.